Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Novel bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shaftney receives overwhelming support as his stewardship is questioned. The NCA receives a helping hand in keeping the beaches clean and the community of canneries working together for the common good. The House of Assembly spoke loud and clear from Tuesday through the wee hours of Wednesday, January 30, 2018, when government MPs strongly reiterated their unequivocal support for and confidence in Prime Minister Honorable Alan Michael Shastny. The failure of the opposition's motion comes just two years after the St. Lucia Labour Party was voted out of office in favor of the United Workers' Party on June 6, 2016. 11 MPs out of 17 voted a resounding no following a day-long debate on a no-confidence motion in the Prime Minister presented by the Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, and which called for the resignation of the Prime Minister. The motion was unambiguously shut down as each member was called on to register his and her vote. Honorable Gail Rigobert highlighted the Prime Minister's interest and commitment to the education sector. The Viewford Comprehensive Secondary School, a school that does very, very well. The alma mater of some people in this very chamber. When I walked that compound, teachers and students alike said to me, Minister, termites fall into our school bags, into our lunch boxes, and into our hair. By the time I got to Castries and had engaged this Prime Minister, he said, Go ahead and do what you need to do for the A-level block where the termites were falling in the hair of children, in the hair of teachers, in their lunch boxes, and in their school bags. And by the way, the termites preceded us, but it was this prime minister who gave us the resources to rehabilitate that block. Yes, in Viewfort South, incidentally. But let me say further, that was outside of the 10 million that he gave later on in the year to address similar issues in other schools around the country. MP spoke to the road rehabilitation program, the upsurge in the tourism industry, the rehabilitation of schools, the decrease in unemployment, the support to the police force, projects for the south of the island, and the renewed investor confidence in St. Lucia as a whole. We speak about roads, maintenance on roads. We speak about roads being done under the previous government. What roads have been done under the previous government? Tell us. What roads have been done under the previous government? Huh? Tell us the roads. You know? We have an extensive road rehabilitation program that's, that has started and is continuing. And Mr. Speaker, the people are no longer blind. The people can see what is being done on the ground. Prime Minister Shastney was credited for the signs of recovery in the economy after years of significant low growth. Meantime, Prime Minister Shastney updated the House on the excise tax on fuel. In a detailed report, the Prime Minister informed that government in maintaining stability in the retail sector amidst rising global oil prices registered losses between the period July 3, 2017 and December 9, 2018. The excise tax collected was $3.24 for gasoline and $3.71 for diesel and not the stipulated $4.00. For the period July 17, 2017 and March 2018, $49.6 million was collected compared to $59.9 million had the tax been at $4. So what that means is that when the price of fuel dropped um, below the level that would have justified a $13.95 rate, government maintained the $13.95 rate in order to be able to recoup some of the $9 million shortfall this year and $9 million shortfall from the previous year. But we were really trying to just recoup some of the money from then. In addition to that, all expectations have been that the price of fuel is going to go right back up. Um, we see what has taken place 
in Venezuela. We see what's taking place in the Middle East. And all the pundits indicate they expect that the price is going to go back up. Prime Minister Alan Chastney. The National Conservation Authority, NCA, has received a helping hand in keeping the beaches clean, thanks to Harris Paints. Teaming up to clean up is the slogan being used by Harris Spain St. Lucia Limited as the corporate entity strives to play its part to create a cleaner St. Lucia. The entity on Wednesday donated garbage receptacles for beach use to the National Conservation Authority, NCA. Retail Services Representative for Harris Spain St. Lucia Limited, Kathy Charles Johnny, explained the significance of the entity fulfilling its corporate responsibilities. So now this partnership with the NCA is right on par with what we're doing, which is the beautification of St. Lucia. And the timing is ideal because we're looking at the 40th anniversary of independence. And this is going to work well into keeping St. Lucia beautiful, 40 years of a beautiful independence. And we want to continue right along that path. And as a corporate sponsor, we are very pleased to be part of such an occasion. We've done it in the past and we look forward to doing it in the future as well. The donation comes as the indiscriminate dumping of garbage on beaches continue to pose a serious threat to marine life, health risk to beach users and members of the public. Chairman of the National Conservation Authority and Mayor of Grosley, James Edwin, described the gesture as timely. We are about to celebrate our 40th anniversary of independence. And I know as part of the whole programming for the celebration, there is plan for a national cleanup campaign. Now, I know that the National Conservation Authority is tasked with the responsibility of conserving certain areas as far as conservation practices and keeping our beaches clean. So this presentation this morning of those receptacles, I know will go a very long way. With Harris Paints starting up this initiative, this is exactly what we are looking for from corporate partners. The, to be sensitive to issues like that, issues of uh, environmental concerns, and to act. Edwin also challenges Harris Payne St. Lucia Limited to collaborate with the Grosley Constituency Council in a bid to assist with its beautification, cleanup, and restoration campaign. General Manager of the NCA, Jacinta Lee, urged members of the public to practice more responsible disposal of garbage. The people need to respect those bins. They're very nice, so they might be stolen. And I hope that doesn't happen. But the other thing too, and the experiences um, we've had with, with, with bins, is that people place dead animals in the bins. So it's, and it's not fair to our cleaners, our, our, our conservation assistants, who have to deal with maggots. So we are hoping that this doesn't happen this time around. We will be enclosing the bins, so it will be very difficult for people to place, place large objects in there. Harris Spain St. Lucia has also donated garbage receptacles to other entities, including Ancillary Fish Fry, as well as Ancillary Infant and Primary School. This is Nation Beat. We're back in a moment. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there is hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Welcome back. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, the Honorable Alan Chastney, on Wednesday moved to make amendments to the National Honours and Awards Bill. According to the Prime Minister, the change would facilitate more individuals receiving national awards annually. This is to do with our highest award, um, which is the St. Lucia Cross. Um, uh, previously, um, the uh, committee was limited to being able to give two um, awards in three years. So it was, there was no more than three persons in any two successive years that were permitted to get the award. 
um, and we're making an amendment to allow um, for there to be two awards per year. So in essence, um, we're increasing the allocation. Um, instead of having three people over two years, we're going to have four people over the two years. Um, and the, the intention here, um, Mr. Mr. Um, Speaker, is to basically have one award on a regular basis which will be given to an outstanding international individual. Prime Minister Shasna explained that part of the aim is to ensure that deserving members of the international community are able to receive awards as well. What we would like to be able to do is to associate our, our award with persons um, internationally that uh, stand up to the same values as our country. Very similar, and I'm certainly a, a lofty with regards to the Nobel Laureate, being able to issue awards internationally to support peoples that share their, their values of their country. So the intention here is not to dilute the award, because I think that was something that was a concern in terms of recognizing um, that many people on a per annum basis, um, but to at least reserve one of the awards that would be specifically for the international. And I look forward to the support of members um, in this amendment that we're, that we're making. The community of Canaries is another step closer to realizing the goal of acquiring an ambulance appliance. Anisia Antoine reports. Under the patronage of the Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary Canaries, the St. Lucia Social Development Fund and the Canaries UK Association are undertaking a number of fundraising initiatives to procure an ambulance for the community of Canaries. One of several fundraisers was a lunch and auction supported by the business community at Royalton Beach Resort and Spa on Sunday, January 27th. Andre Lansico is the head of the Canaries Ambulance Fundraising Committee. The support has been overwhelming. Um, we originally planned on having an activity catering for about 250 people, but the level of um, interest and um, support that we have gotten, we have even had to increase it to 300. So we are indeed grateful for the corporate partners and the locals as well who have came forward and um, showed that they are interested and uh, willing to assist us in our quest to um, bring back our ambulance service to our village. The community, which was previously serviced by an ambulance for over 20 years, has been without that service for the last four years. Parliamentary representative for Ancillary Canaries, Honorable Dominic Fede, expressed his gratitude towards the Ministry of Health for their support. Great support from the Ministry of Health. I want to thank them for uh, making sure that they are the ones who are paying for the driver of the facility, paying for the staff, personnel. They are taking care of all the insurance as well and all of the uh, maintenance costs will be bared for by the government of St. Lucia. So this is a good partnership between the government of St. Lucia and the people of Canaries. And as the parliamentary representative, I am extremely gratified. We also have the Canaries UK Association. They have agreed to do a fundraiser as well um, to aid our efforts so that we can uh, see uh, the um, the, the, the goal of an ambulance being met. Honorable Dominic Fede also expressed his appreciation to the village council members for their contribution towards making the initiative a success. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. before repeat at 7.30 a.m. and on this station as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Colonel Norbert.